in this second lesson you're going to become familiar with the water element. Of course, as before, in the previous lesson, before we do the, the outright practice, I'm going to talk about additional things to expand your perception. And of course, I'm adjusting this to new developments in my research because I have written the course originally 22 years ago in uh, 1988 and a lot of things happened meanwhile. In this lesson, you'll become familiar with the second element of oneness, which is the element of water. And in choosing this sequence, we are following the structure of the divine name yud heh -Oh -He. The first He in this name represents the element of water or the astral plane or the pentagon. Water also appears as the exact opposite of the fire element. As far as elemental polygons that we are using, they refer to the Kabbalistic structure. In the first lesson already, I mentioned elemental polygons. And uh, actually, when referring to designs representing elements or elemental shapes, many students think of one or two methods that symbolize elements. One set of elemental symbol is it taught in so-called hermetic schools, and the other set refers to the system of tattvas. For our purpose, both sets of symbols are useless. It is better to use a set of elemental symbols which represent the four elements within. And this set is an expression of the divine name which we are using of the yud heh -Oh -He. And therefore the elemental polygons which we are using are exact structural representations which are evident in basic Kabbalistic principles. We can derive these basic principles from the structure of the solar system as we perceive it. And uh, knowledge of it will help you gain a more useful access to the Kabbalistic system and also to the oneness within using the four elements. Let's take the zodiac. It has 360 degrees, which uh, refers approximately to the 360 days which the Earth needs to orbit around the Sun. 24 Numbers are there by which you can divide the number 360 without having a reminder. The numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, 12, 15, 18, 20, etc. Um, two of these numbers are not figurative. A figurative number is a number which corresponds to a regular polygon and it is obvious that in Euclidean straight line geometry you cannot inscribe a, a polygon in a circle which has one or two corners. You need at least three points in the circle to inscribe a polygon. And therefore the numbers one and two are not figurative and the other 22 numbers are figurative. This means that each of these remaining 22 numbers represent a regular polygon which we can inscribe in the circle of 360 degrees. Each of these polygons represents an energetic state and from this come the 22 energetic states in the solar system which are defined in that system. The Hebrew alphabet, by the way, consists of 22 letters. Uh, the tw uh, 22 numbers and we recognize soon that all of them are composed of the three basic numbers um, 1, 2, 3 and 5. The number 1 appears in all numbers. You may regard it as a unifying principle. The numbers 2, 3 and 5 relate to the three mothers of which you read in the Kabbalah. Like the number 1, the number 2 is not figurative and it's expressed first time in the four, which is its own multiple uh, of two. 
and figurative. So, when we refer to the three mothers, seven double letters and twelve symbol one, we mean the three elements above that which is conscious, the earth element, which are the seven planetary principles and the twelve zodiacal modifiers, zodiacal sign. And the three mother letters are Aleph, Mim, and Sheen, relating to the cards of the Tarot, Magician, Death, and Fool. They are square, the square, the pentagon, and the triangle. The fourth element, Earth, is in all other principles. It combines them. And it would be interesting, after you know, to connect the four elements, to actually connect all 22 Hebrew letters. The seven double ones and the twelve simple ones are top here. And its representation is the pentagram. Double principles are represented by numbers which you can divide by a double three, which means a nine. Exception here must be 360, which is an expression of all. Some systems of magic of the planetary spheres ascribe a number of planetary spirits or genii to each sphere which corresponds to the number of its polygon. Nine genii of the sphere of Saturn, eight into the sphere of Jupiter, 36 to Mars, 35 to the Sun, 72 very well known, 72 names of God to the sphere of Mercury, 90 to Venus, and 180 the Moon. The 360 itself relates to the Earth, which is a manifestation of the planetary function. If your intent is to align the elements within as a relation to the generalized universal principles which they can repress, you will do well to use the zodiacal polygons which represent these principles. The triangle for the fire, the pentagon for the water, the square for the air, and the pentagram for the consciousness or earth. It is interesting to note that the polygon with five points here, and I, you noticed that already, is the first one which can be inscribed in a circle in two regular shapes, a pentagon and a pentagram. And this is expressed in the divine name which has two letters A. Incidentally, the letter He is also the fifth letter in the Hebrew alphabet.